Have your seats. As we look into the word of God. You have your Bibles with you. Lift your Bible up. Say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of truth. It is the word of power. It is the word of revelation. Inside of this word is written everything that consigns me. This is a compass of my destiny. Word of God, come alive in my life. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be speaking to us briefly this afternoon on the power of choice. Ah, choice. Somebody say, Choi, Choi. Choi, Choi, Choice. Uh, it sounds like a Chong Chi. Yes. You know? But you see, this candy called the power of choice is something we do every day. Amen. There is, you're coming to church today. Is it not a choice? Is it by, was it by force? No, uh, no, no, man. Hey, yeah, yeah. You're going to go to work today, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow I should say. Hey, is anybody flogging you to go to work? You go to work by choice. Choice is one of the most powerful instruments of a man. When I mean a man, both men and women. Choice. But many times we have not even given attention to it. To know that the choices we make, we either make us or mar us in life. Can anybody here stand and tell me I was forced by God to serve him? Can anybody say, oh, that an angel put a sword by my throat and said, if I don't serve God, he will slip my throat off. It's a choice. Those in school today, and they are matured enough to know right from wrong. They are in school because they have made a choice to acquire an extra knowledge to enhance themselves because of where they are going in life. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Some open doors need eye opening. Not all doors are open doors. When you say I have an open door, as you are having an open door, you need an eye opening. Yes. You need open eyes to see an open door. Praise God. Results in life are the product of your choice. You know, when I finish with this study today, you will know that not everything Satan was responsible. Praise God. I, I, I spoke to Ross the other time. I say, you keep praying about those that are after my life, destroying my life. And then what about you, the part of you that you have destroyed? Who is after you? We are also a problem to ourselves. That's 70% of it. Choice. The power of choice. Your choice determines your outcome. What you decided to do today, the outcome will definitely come tomorrow. Yes. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. So do not be deceived. For God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. It's a choice to sow. Yes. But you have no choice when it comes to reaping. Because what you sow definitely must return back to you. Because I tell you the truth. If we have choice based on what we want to reap, then we'll be able to con control the productivities. Praise God. When you do something bad here, you want to say, no, 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 I don't want to reap something bad. Give me something good. But no, you make a choice to sow. And before you sow what you're sowing, make sure you look at the product. Look at what you're sowing. Because that very thing you're seeing, you will get it back in hundredfold. Yes whether good or bad so some believe that god is responsible for this law 
Praise God. God is not responsible. The Bible said, why the earth remain it? Seed time and a harvest shall not see. So it is a principle and a procedure that God has already laid out for you and I. If you are living in an apartment and you decide not to pay your rent by choice, you will be quitted by choice. Because another person is the, at the other side making choice to also get you out. When you eat food and fill up your stomach by choice, by the order of the things and your, the order of your life and your body, by choice also, your body will decide to remove some waste. Amen. You have no control. When it comes, they call it the call of nature. You have no control. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Moses was speaking in a gathering of the Israelites. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have what? Set before you what? Is it curry go to chicken? I, I, are you sure? It seems like what I'm seeing is that I have set before you precious food, curry goat, chicken, and some palatable good sauce meat. Wow. No. I have set before you life and what? Blessing and what? Cursing. Therefore what? That what thou and thy seed may live. There are people that have died without bringing forth their seed. They died by choice. I want to be very, very, very specific today that the choice we make because many of us don't want God to direct us. Amen. We want to be the director of our lives. And only when things are not going well is when we need God. Immediately it's going well. We become the king that nobody advises. We direct things in a way, forgetting that the Lord is to guide your path and guide you in the way you should go. And even when God is using your pastor to talk to you, you become chief commander of yourself. Maybe because you've sized the pastor, you have money more than the pastor. Your car is not as, is, is, the pastor's car is not as good as your car. Uh, maybe the pastor is staying in one self-contained. And you live in a mansion with so many cottages scattered all over. And you ask yourself, if this man is of God. Why is he not bigger than me in all these things of life? My dear, let me tell you the truth. You are far from the kingdom. Paul said something. He said, we are poor, yet make many rich. He was not talking about the poverty, the physical lack. Or he was not talking about the, 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 uh, the material things, I should say. He was talking about the physical things that we lack but yet we make others rich in the wealth of this life and after this life are you aware that if you live a life of dedication to everybody you may not have 45 percent for yourself so it's a choice put that scripture up it's a choice that you and I have been making since we were born. Where you are today was the product of the choice you made many years ago. Hold on. Before you start accusing Satan and reminding God how God did not 
gifted you very well or bless your own family where you were born very well my dear please what about the choices you 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 have made you and i we have made your choice is your passport your choice is your flight ticket any day you make a choice just know that you just bought a ticket because you must be back on that journey it's a journey of life that you may be one spot you never know that you have traveled and the bible said he said therefore choose what therefore choose what as i speak now i'm speaking the word of god into our lives but it is your choice to receive or not to receive choice it's a choice that makes a man say i want to sit under you and learn it's a choice that makes somebody say i am too big and as you can see i'm beginning to have gray hairs i don't have time for nonsense and they create their own part in life my grandfather used to say something those days when we were very little he said what an elder sits down and see a young man would climb the trees and he would not be able to see them these days every young star wants to be a millionaire and when i hear people say oh i want god to bless me i want to be a millionaire and i look at them the first thing i will always ask is what are you doing now to get you to that location and you will hear more especially some young Torontonians, praise God, people here in Toronto, they will say, you see, I am young now. I'm in my what? Twenties. So, um, there are things I need to do now. Because if I don't do it now, time is what? And what are those things? Very, very useless lifestyles. Hello? yes sir is coming from here so maybe this should be my congregation now very irresponsible things how can you say you, you are you, you you are targeting to be a judge or a supreme court judge and every day you are out night clubbing every night even when the night club is not open you are calling the manager and say please can you people just open try and open two hours earlier You want to be, you're looking, you're looking at yourself in the mirror. You say, oh, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be one of the top, top, top shots in politics in the next seven, ten years to come. And every day you are having marijuana in your hand. You have become the train station that nobody knows where it's going. If God wanted you, to smoke, it will give you a source back here. Yes. How will you draw from here? You push out from this way. Amen. But God didn't make you that way. So those things you are doing, they are in the society things that could you could literally push those kind of human beings aside and say these ones are not responsible. I don't care if the government has legalized it. Since the government legalized smoking marijuana, how many politicians have you seen? in the public smoking it oh uh, why is it that some people stay high to smoke it oh okay in Dundas now they sell they, they don't even sell government gives out cocaine for free crack uh, so why why are some people still hiding shooting themselves with it because your body your conscience is telling you that what you're doing is wrong. And every day, you roll up your sleeves. Give yourself vaccine that nobody's asking you to give. Shoot yourself. You feel iry. And down the line, suddenly, a terminal disease erupts in the individual's body. Or down the line, the lady feels like now she's ready to get married. 
after multiple abortions when a woman commits or God gets involved in abortion it is like the body system literally says that she has given birth It's a choice that you are here today listening and hearing what I'm saying. That simply means that you still have the ability to make the right choice. Some of us don't like ourselves. We don't like the product we have come to become today. It's not too late. You can change it. You can consciously make a decision to change it. tell people I say education does not give you good morals <laughs> that you a PhD holder does not mean that we should expect you to reason to reason very well what education does is to enhance your area of interest and prepare you towards that area but morality is a thing of the heart. I don't know if it were, if, if, if it was, some of us here was talking to this congregation. I was talking. I was saying that many years ago, the Europeans came to Africa. They said, "Oh, Africans were running around naked. Oh, close yourself, Africans. Close yourself, Africans. You guys are not smart. You are not wise. This is immoral. Close yourselves up. Cover yourself. And today, we decide, okay, no problem. They say we should put on clothes. We're putting on clothes. And they are the one literally returning back to the Stone Age to walk around naked. Doesn't that tell you something? that the world is retrogressing. Make a choice today. You want to be a CEO, there is no better time than now. Somebody say I hear So what, what, what God, the Bible said here, is that therefore choose what? Life. He said, I would want you to choose. It's not the will of God that anyone should perish. God wants us to choose life. And when I speak about the, the things that we sow in this life, I don't care if you, if you finally got born again. After all the evils you've committed. Let me tell you. There's something about being born again and there's another thing about reaping what you sow. You think somebody's going to reap it for you? No, 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 man. There, there, is, a, there is a word called the cause and effect. When you got born again, your soul, your spirit is saved and your soul, which is your mind, is being saved. The word being saved is that you are still a work in progress, but you have aligned yourself with Christ. So if you should die, you have peace with Christ. But there is something actually you did that have nothing to do with that. The seed you sowed to your body, to your flesh. Am I coming with somebody? Sometime earlier this year, I gave a prophecy. I said, many top artists in the entertainment industry will start coming back to Christ, right? We've seen that happening. Now, one of the ladies, I've forgotten that her name, you know, that gave her life to Christ. She was one of these silicon ladies that are not real. Praise God. And suddenly, when she now got born again, she started deflecting all those things. Now, for the fact that she is born again, those things will not automatically leave her body or spiritually vanish. She has to correct them physically. 
some of them go back and start the, the demonic tattoos they put on themselves they start trying to take them out they being born again will not take those things out but if you die and leave this earth your soul is with the lord but your body what you've done with this body the earth has it. so if you're still alive the choice you make is to start correcting those things you must make a conscious decision somebody say amen, amen. it's a choice for a young man to decide to make it in life and it's a choice also for the individual to say I want to be in my father's house till the age of 40. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19 to 20. Acts 14, 19 to 20. One of the disciples of Jesus called Stephen. And there came Tida, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew, drew, drew him out of the city so, supposing he had been dead praise God supposing he had been dead now the next thing Paul did and go to the next verse how be it as the disciples stood around about him he rose up and came into the city and next day he departed with Barnabas to temple. Now Paul decided he would not die. It's a decision. But look at this other guy called Stephen. In the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 57 to 60. They've not even killed Stephen. Stephen has already started begging Jesus, please come and take my soul. Then they cried out with what? A loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with what one accord next verse praise God and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their what their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus, receive my word. Amen. Wrong prayer. <laughs> what came to kill you has not yet killed you. You're already preparing your burial. Praise God. You're already doing what? Preparing your you're making a choice that will affect the outcome of your prayers. You are in the hospital. And you are asked, do you believe God will heal you? Yes, God will heal me. Okay, let's start praying. You are praying for God's healing. And yet, behind the prayer, you're already preparing your will. What are you doing? Your action, you remember, prayer without what works is what? Your action will determine the outcome of what you're doing. So Stephen had not seen anything yet. They stoned Paul. Paul said, I will not die. The Bible said, I shall not die, but what? Live to declare the goodness of God. That is purpose. When a man lacks purpose, he's ready to give up and throw in the towel at any given time. Purpose is what puts you in the place of, 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 of less tiredness. You are not tired because you are a man of purpose. You, are, you don't give up because you have purpose inside of you. You don't give up because you have decided that you must make it a life. Amen. The Queen of England wrote a book and said something. Say, if there is anybody's prayer, I'm afraid of it's a prayer of John Knox. St. John Knox's prayer is as dangerous as an army of 10,000 soldiers. One man. 
a man that opened his mouth and said to God, he said, give me England or I die. Choice. Hallelujah. Right now as I'm speaking, you can make that choice and see yourself through with it. Because, let me tell you, that's why I make sure I watch all my members and ask you, when I feel like you're not moving very well, I'll call you and say, God, what is happening? Do you need us to sit down to talk? Because too much preaching, you know, a, a way of staring people up without direction has made many become so lazy in the church. God will bless you. Amen. What are you doing? Haven't you read? The Bible says He will bless the works of your hands. God wants to bless you, but He needs you to be doing something so He will bless you through that very thing. Don't look at the brother's car and go to the car and lay your hands and say, Father, I claim this kind of No, that's wrong. That brother worked hard to get that car. That's wrong. Anybody that you see trying to claim what you have by faith, tell them faith does not work like that. Praise God. You have to be active, be conscious of the choices you are making. It is a choice for a child to be disobedient to their parents. It's a choice. And it's a choice also for a child to be obedient to their parents. There is a level a child will come to that that child does, in fact, the parents will talk less and start watching more. Because you can't, you can't be beating a man at the age of 40 and say half sense, half sense, half sense, half sense, half sense. You can't do that. Praise God. Or a woman of 22, 23. You're whooping them. Say, what is wrong with you, you little girl? No man. It doesn't make sense. If people see that, they will ask you, what have you been doing when this, little, when this girl was little indeed? Not now. That she has grown up. And now you want to correct what you told people not to speak about when she was there. You know, I, I fought parents. Children are not raised by just one person. Children are raised by community. We are a community, right? If you live that kind of life that when somebody rebuke your child, you believe that that, you, that person hates your child, then you are the, the, the worst witch in the life of that child. You're witching that child and you don't want that child to succeed. If you like, you say amen. But, uh, praise God. Yeah. Oh, Sister Agnes, I never liked the way you spoke to my son. Hey, what business does Agnes have with a seven-year-old boy? Agnes is a woman that has her own kids. If your son is doing something wrong, they should tell your son, stop. be afraid to tell your son your children to stop doing the wrong thing if you want me to be afraid I will be afraid of doing it because if you give the body language that you don't want nobody to pick on your child something is wrong with you you are about destroying the life of that child so it's a choice that you have made do you think that this young man run around and take guns and shoot people around in Toronto do you think that, 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 that their parents made no choice. No, their parents made a choice. They made a choice. Some of them come from a broken home where, where the mother has refused the father to see the children. Let me tell you, ladies, if you have a responsible man, maybe he didn't walk out with the board of him, and but that man wants to play a role, more especially in the life of his son, let that man raise him. As a son, more especially when the man is reasonable. When you raise as a woman, you raise a son. What else? As a woman, you know how to tell a boy to do. 
Before you know it, you tell the boy, pose for the picture. The boy wants to do like this. You know why? Because the boy sees the mother pose that way for the picture. He's not standing like a real man. He wants to. And each time the boy sees makeup, him, mommy, put it. Because he watches the mother come do her makeup. Yeah, man. So it's a choice that you are making. Yes. And you gotta be very careful. Because when you make that choice, those children will grow up, they will return back to you as a weapon of destruction, not blessing. As a woman, you, you, you don't know the right time to start bringing your kids to the kitchen. It's immediately the clock five years old. And you are happy. your child is growing up and is developing as a woman and she doesn't know how to cook. Even, even to own the gas, you don't want them. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> ah, You're in trouble. Uh, because no matter how a man will claim he loves that girl, the man does not joke with his stomach. And he can't be eating chicken nuggets all the days of his life. Somebody say that too. No, no, no. He can't be eating chicken nuggets always. One day he will get tired and ask her, did your mother teach you something? I know of this wedding that I also joined in officiating. We never knew that the girl does not know how to cook. Every time the, the, the young man is visiting her, she will go and buy already made food and pour it inside the pot. I don't know, oh, sweetheart, you're here. Because after wedding comes marriage. After they've done wedding, marriage is not set. Baby, go to the market, go buy something and cook. It's weekend. Trouble started. When everything was ready, so she poured everything inside, poured water. And she doesn't even know how to on the simple stove. She, she, she poured it inside there and is clapping hand on top of it. And the man asks, what are you doing? He said, this is how I see my mother do it. Those are the kind of curry goats. When they say they have prepared curry goats for you, don't just go close. Because when you go close, you will be a best friend of the loo. Just take a mat and put by the loo. It's a choice that the parents have made in that child. And now the mess is out. It's no longer a family mess. It's now a community mess. If you like, don't give offering today. No trouble. Praise, praise God. I'm saying the truth and I'll keep preaching it. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say truth is good. Truth is good. So you, you, we, we, we all have to consciously make a good choice. Amen. At one point in our lives, including myself, we make choices that will find out that man, this thing is a mess, you know. But you gotta be sure what you do. Yes. That's why we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you pray, you're not hearing anything, go to your pastor. Say, Pastor, please, can you join me in seeking the face of God? I need direction. Yes. When I mean pastor, I mean pastor indeed. I don't mean people that God qualified to come on the pulpit based on theology school. Need me pastors that hear from God. Because if you're a pastor, you're not hearing from God. How can you direct a full-fledged man that has come to you? Because we need divine direction, not educational direction. I come to you to tell me how I'm going to get out of this. You're plotting graph. If I, if, I, if I need engineering course, I know you have to go for it. Don't give me graph. <clears throat> tell me what God is saying. God wants us to get out of this. 
if, it, if, it, if you are not hearing anything now pastor give me time you could tell me to come back in three days time and use three days and seek the face of your God give us direction that's why I said there is nothing like any bad church there is always a bad pastor a man that doesn't have the ability to go around his work, his tools. No bad church, no bad members. When a good pastor comes and meet a bad congregation, I'm telling you now because I've been there before. You know what he does first? Goes back to God. Father, what shall I do? These people, they look like their eyes is breaking down fire. And God has solution for all problems. The problem is when we don't seek God to get directed and we buy our strength. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. We buy our strength, step in to the matter. You will come out of disgrace. Because you went in by your own accord it's a choice Moses prayed a prayer if your presence does not go with us we are going nowhere but I bring that same word today as a question and rephrase it as a question you've been planning to travel out of the country all this while and suddenly somebody shows you a first-class ticket with Emirate Airline being one of the best airlines and they said you're about to travel now would you go and seek the face of God and ask God, should I fly? Or I should not. Knowing that that journey will also accompany with one million dollars. And in your whole life, you have never touched one million dollars. It takes discipline to seek the face of God. If you're a, pers if you're a materialistic person, you will always miss God. Say to your neighbor, say my neighbor. my neighbor. I mean, talk to somebody, say my neighbor. My neighbor. If you're a materialistic person, you will always miss God. Always miss God. Yeah, because everything you see, if there is no way you're getting out of it, you won't get it. But blessings are wrapped up in things that don't look like blessings. Are you there? What's your choice do for you? Very fast. What's your choice do for you? Number one, it determines your fighting level. Your choice determines your fighting level. Not all fights you get yourself involved in. There are some fights that you are not supposed to get yourself involved. I don't care, be it physical or spiritual. Did God ask you to join the fight? When John the Baptist left the, the message God gave to him and started wanting to go and check who is sleeping with who, his head was removed as a prophet. Praise God. Because your fight determines your flight. Number two, your choice determines your destination. Genesis chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. Your choice determines your destination. When you make a choice, and a good one for that matter, it determines where you're going. And now Adam cursed from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Talking about Cain and Abel. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. For a fidgety and a vagabond. No, I've told you about the spirit of vagabond. And a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Cain made a choice and his choice gave him a destination. Be careful of the choice you make. Praise God. And even when you want to get married, don't overlook anything. Anything you think that is not right, please change your mind. A broken relationship is better than a what? A broken home. Praise God. Number three. Your choice determines your possibilities. Your choice determines your possibilities. There is nothing like there is no road here. 
No, 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 no. There is a way where there seems to be no way. But when you make the wrong choice because you, you, you did not adhere to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, your possibilities will be limited. Number four, your choice molds and forms your character. Joseph made a choice not to defy himself. Genesis chapter 39 verse 9. He made a choice. He said, I will not. Seeing that this is evil, I will not do such unto the Lord. Or I will not sin against God. So he made a choice. And that choice he made catapulted him to be the prime minister of Egypt. Choice may be very little. But can have the ability to make you the next president. Or make you the next slave in town. Your choice. Hallelujah. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now, how do I make good choices? How do I make good choices? Number one, stay in the word of God. Amen. The word of God is the caption for every greatness. Can I hear you say the word of God? The word of God is what it takes to propel you and to let you know when the time is right for you to go in. Amen. The word of God is your compass, your everyday compass. Am I talking to just two persons in the house? Amen. Number two, get relevant knowledge. How to make good choices. Know what you want to make a choice about. Relevant knowledge. Can I hear you say knowledge? Knowledge is not cheap. Knowledge is not cheap. You want to go into a business. Before you make that choice to go into that business, go and study about that business very well. Don't go into the business by faith. There are things you exercise faith in. There are things you should not exercise faith in. One of it is go and know what it's like. When the Israelites were, were about to invade the city, the Bible said they sent in spies to go and what? Study the land. You want to go into a particular business, you have not studied anything. In fact, some of us in school, we did some particular courses in school. Since you left school, have you ever picked up a textbook that has to do with the courses you studied in school? So why did you go to school? Like, I need to understand why some people go to school. Why? Okay, fine, you did your college. You've done, you finished your university. You've gotten a degree. Degree in what? You have a degree in medicine. And you're being a secretary to somebody. Does that make sense? That's a waste of resources. Anything you know you will not become at the end, don't start it. It's a waste of resources. It's a waste. It, it is not the theology school you went to that guarantees you calling. No, God should call you first. The theology school is to give you a, you know some kind of little knowledge i call it little knowledge because all knowledge about the calling of god and the scripture comes from god so in the theology school you go there to get some little you know exegesis of knowledge just little little things that will equip you to now start gaining more bigger knowledge based on your relationship with god you cannot be an evil and fly with canary bed. It is a crime for an eagle to drag rice with chicken. It's an abomination for you as an eagle. And you're flying with seagull. All seagull does is to drag food and fight for food. And you can't call yourself a seagull ministry person. No. You are a royal priesthood. If you understand how God views you, 
you'll be very careful of the choices you make the problem is that many of us don't even know who we are we don't even know what we are made of the purpose of Christ is not to just to die so you will go to heaven no the purpose of Christ is to restore back the true man that God made which is a superman are you with me hallelujah how to make good choice never build your future around your past how many of us have a past here put up your everybody has a past put up your hand how many persons have a past go stop building your tomorrow based on your experience in the past because some experience in the past are not good if people betray you in the past so therefore everybody you see is now a suspect how will you now succeed because you need man on earth to succeed i don't care if you are elijah or you call down fire from heaven you still need man am i talking to somebody so forget about the past and focus on the future if you made a mistake today give god thanks for it say father I have tried this. I've made a mistake and I accept where I have failed. Lord, what next? Stop talking about your yesterday. Even Satan is not interested. You know Satan is not interested in your yesterday. Okay. Nobody is talking. Of course, Satan is not interested. He has battled with you yesterday. The battle is over. He is after your tomorrow. So why every time when I sit you down, I'm talking, you know, Pastor, if you had known me, eh, when I used to have money, who cares? <laughs> if you don't have that talk, turn my stomach, eh, nobody will be saying it to me. No, Pastor, I, if I had met you, if only I had met you when I had so much money, what is happening to you today? Oh man, forget about when you had so much money. Let's talk about today. Let's move forward. So you, you have you even mastered what brought you down? Have you even asked yourself a question? Where did I fail yesterday? Why did I fail yesterday? How did I fail yesterday? Those questions were help to mold your today. So you will now make the right choice to affect your tomorrow positively. Somebody say, I hear you. Number four, you must learn to relate well. Somebody say relate well. Some, some don't have good relationship. You relate with people in a very hostile way. You make it the wrong choice. When you see your fellow believers, even though you don't know them officially, for the first time, don't act like they're coming to take position from you. You know, there are people in the church that they hate newcomers. They don't like newcomers. Praise God. They don't like newcomers. Immediately the newcomers start going too close to the pastor. Nobody should tell me not here because I'm the pastor. I'm the one to say not here. Immediately newcomers start rolling close to pastor and say, Hey, pastor, how are you doing? Pastor, you're looking good today. Hey, so who would that? Now you want to greet pastor that morning. Be good morning. Good morning, pastor. No man. Wrong choice. Let everybody breathe. Am I communicating with somebody? Because the way you... I know you love your pastor, praise God. But some of us need to tone down a little bit. Because you, you are looking like you want to, you want to claim ownership. <laughs> Because when you start, when you, hold on, when you start claiming ownership, you're scaring some people from coming close. And I tell you the truth, I need the support of everybody. If I bring the problem of this church and put on one person's head, I tell you the person will faint seven times before they die. So, but when you allow people to come around, associate together, the challenges we have will be shared amongst all, and it will not be too much I tell you the truth okay all right number five and the last praise God people 
relate with with um with you based people relate with you based on how your relationship is to them. It's a choice they have to make also. So when you give them a negative vibe, they will vibe you negatively. I repeat, when you give people negative vibe, don't complain when they start vibrating you in a negative way. The choice we all make is the next phase of our tomorrow. I want to charge us today. Make the right choice. Because people you relate with will help you make a better choice when it comes to the new door God has opened for you. People you relate with. So also check the kind of relationship you have. There are some relationships immediately you bring the person close to you, your doors will just lock. You have to, by choice, know who you're going to allow into your inner circle. Why can't you with somebody? Your inner circle is not for everybody. It's for people that are willing to help you get to your destination. Don't bring mosquitoes close to you. Mosquitoes, they carry, they have pipe. They will pipe you from every angle. And they suck you out, suck you dry. You know. And immediately mosquito is done sucking you. What does it do? Fly you. So be very careful. Not all help you answer to. Hey, I need your help. No. Not all you answer to. You have to know who you are helping. Why you are helping. Because if you keep doing that, you may end up not being able to save anything in your life. All because any call that comes from the back home, you are responding. Are you, are you working with 911? Praise God. You have to make sure that you giving that help, you are already healthy first before you utter those help. Rise up to your feet.